Hey everybody, I'm at the Blick Art Store in Tampa. And so I'm going to flip around and just, I don't want to make you feel sad that you don't have this, but I think you liked it last time. So I'm going to show you a few things that I'm looking for. The brush, um, I'm in the brush aisle right now. And I didn't, I was surprised I didn't find, I've heard a lot about the Blick, um, what are they called? The Golden Taclon, but I didn't, looks like they only have it online. So I may try a couple of these Scholastic. I don't spend a lot on brushes um, for the kind of work I do. I do really like though these Windsor and Newton Cotman brushes. Even though they're a watercolor brush, I'll use them, the round, like the round number six is probably my favorite. And um, I just wash them really well, you know, cause I'm using them with acrylic or aqua gouache, but they're lovely. And let's see, I mean, Windsor Newton in general is good, but I also think that this, this Blick, um, brand is good. And I don't, I generally use synthetic brushes, not um, the natural fibers. These are a bit rough, the hog. All right, let's go look at some paint. Hi, Janet. Hi, Sue. Okay, let's see. This is the oil aisle. And I've been playing with the Windsor Newton Artisan, here they are. Now, let's see, the water mixable is the what, what I've been playing with. Are these the ones? These are regular oils. Yeah, I've been, here are the water mixables. And they are oil color, they're oil paint. They're made with linseed oil, they are straight. They're just that they, they modified the, the chemicals so that you can dissolve it with water. So I have several colors, but I needed an indigo dark. I just didn't have, I have black, but I wanted like to see if they have an indigo. Prussian blue, that's a, that might have to do for my dark blue. And then I can mix black to make what I like, but, um, and I think I might need, uh, do I have an orange? Oh, I should have written down what I already have, right? I don't think I have an orange. Anyway, I've been playing with these. I'll do a YouTube on them. So that's oil. We won't spend a lot of time there. Um, hey, Pam. Hey, Kelly. I'm at the Dick. Um, well, I guess it's just called Blick. It used to be Dick Blick. Now it's just Blick. Okay, look at that. That's the Liquitex acrylic gouache. And it, I like it, but I have to say, I, I like the Turner just as much, and it's quite a bit less expensive. Um, but I do have some colors of this. There's the regular Liquitex and the heavy body. And let's see what else is down here. The Liquitex Basics. And the Windsor Newton Acrylics. Here are some of the some of the moleskins. No, they're in the next aisle. Here's golden. I I do like golden a lot for acrylic. It's you know it doesn't you don't need it for certain things. Oh, I am trying these. I ordered some the golden open. So they're slow drying acrylic colors. Let me know if any of you have tried them. Hi Sandra. Hi Heather. Um, and I love these. These are the Golden So Flats, which are a super, super matte um, color. They really do look like that, like that sample there. There's no sheen to them. So they, they're, they're basically like a gouache, aqua gouache, which is really an acrylic paint with those matte qualities. 
um, the open is supposed to take like, uh, you know, kind of mimic um, oil paint in that it stays, um, you know, wet. It doesn't dry as fast. So I'll let you know how that goes. I'll do a video on those. I don't know how long they stay open, but... And then, I know some of you have tried these Blick Matte Acrylics, and they're really... Um, hey, Deborah. Hey, Melanie. I'm at the Blick Art Store in Tampa. These matte acrylics are... I've just gotten a few colors, you know, the primaries. And so the new primaries, in case you don't know, because we, we were all taught that it's just red, yellow, and blue, and then you can make any color from those well not really <laughs> um so if you want to try a new paint i always do the new primaries which are a yellow you can either do a lemony yellow or a yellow deep in fact i'm going to get a lemony yellow in this because i tried the the matte and then a magenta of some kind and then a an aqua or a teal or a turquoise because if you look at like your printer cartridge you will see that they are those three colors so those are more um, the colors that you would get if you just wanted to try and then of course white um, and you might want a dark I might get this dark deep blue it looks pretty so that's the way if you want to try a type of paint and you don't want to buy you know a bunch of colors get your what they call cyan in a printer. Um, get your, it's basically a turquoise, get your magenta and get a yellow. And you can make lots of colors with those three. Um, okay, what else do we have here? Some inks. Let's see, where are, oh, I'm gonna take you to the gouache. There is, there's gouache. Here it is. Oh, this is one of my favorite displays. This gouache, whole bang gouache display. Look at this colors. Again, we really only need those three or four, those <laughs> but we do love buying colors, don't we? Hi, Judy. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Mary Lou. I'm at the Blick Art Store in Tampa, and I should have gotten a basket because let me set my things down here. That I've picked up so far, but um, we're just admiring these Holbein Acro Gouache colors. And I, like I said, if you wanted to try this paint, you could just pick up um, probably, I'm trying to think, you could either get this Cosmos Pink or this Rose is your magenta, or they have a Rose Violet, but pick a magenta, then pick a turquoise this ice green is good and then pick either a lemon yellow or I'd probably pick just a standard yellow one of these two and those three in white are all you need and if you wanted to have a dark you could pick either black of course I like to go with a dark blue so a Prussian blue some paints have an indigo and um, and then I know they have, okay, here's the regular gouache, the Holbein designer gouache, meaning there's no acrylic paint in it. Hey, Diane. Hey, Milan. Hey, Jan. Um, this is the, these are also beautiful colors. These are all the gouache true or regular gouache, meaning no acrylic paint. I thought they had the Windsor Newton. Gosh, these are all watercolors. Oh, here it is. They do. The Windsor Newton Designer gouache. Um, who is it? I'm going to flip you around. <laughs> who was it that posted that? Um, the meme that says, nobody's ever been sad in an art supply store. <laughs> I love that. I've actually, when I've had a tough day or just needed cheering up, I've gone to art stores but uh, anyway, all right, let me show you these. The Windsor Newton designer gouache. So it's a quiz. What three colors would you need if you wanted to try a new paint? You can, yep, you'd pick the lemon yellow or a yellow. It doesn't have to be lemon. 
And then you'd pick one of these magentas in here, probably. And then you'd pick a turquoise. And this is that dreamy turquoise that I've talked about that Winsor Newton has in the gouache. It's luscious. Um, have I shown you everything? Well, of course not everything. Okay, I'll show you the pencils and the... Let's go find the pencil aisle. These are the Derwent. My gosh, you know, they have one, two, three, four, five types of pencil. Um, I just did a video on these intense ones. They're kind of wild. They will um, go on my YouTube channel, but they have their ink in a pencil. So once you use them and you add water and then they, they dry, dries permanently. So you can layer up without affecting previous layers. So those are fun to play with. And then the watercolor pencils are, you know, the ones that you can write, draw with, and then add water. They are not permanent. Um, you can use them wet or dry. Then this brand is Faber-Castell. I have some of these. Um, oh, look at the Neo colors. I know some of you got these sets. Ah, these are the water soluble, and then they're and then the super color pencil. I like these too. You can, if you're traveling, you can just take, you know, this a couple of these and some of these in your sketchbook, and. Actually, if you wanted to have a permanent thing, you could take some of the ink tense pencils and then you could um, really minimally, without even any paint, work in your sketchbook. Um, let's see, have I tried these luminance smooths and permanent lead? Interesting. Oh, there's always something to try, isn't there? Might have to try those. It looks like they're, it's their permanent version of the um, Derwent. Neo Color 2s. Look at all those colors. I might have to get this turquoise. I think my turquoise is getting small. Hey Louise. Hey Carol and Charlotte. At the Blick Art Store in Tampa. I, I said at the front of the video, I didn't want you to feel sad about all this, that you don't you may not have a store like this near you, but you seem to like it last time. So I don't, I didn't, I wanted to show you. And then, um, oh, look at this, this is ink. I like to use ink sometimes at the, um, especially for my darks, Payne's Gray. I don't have Payne's Gray. I think I need to buy it. Um, I like to start a page sometimes with ink just for something different. It's more translucent. And then papers. So mostly we use, I use watercolor papers, as you know, and mixed media papers. But there are all kinds of papers. I've tried these canvas pads before. Is this the canvas pad or canvas paper? Yeah, I just don't like how thin it is. See that? It's just really thin. I, maybe I just don't, don't understand how to get the most out of it. That may be the case, but I like something with some substantial. And then this is the paper that I'm using in my new class on um, the step-by-step -step abstracts and beyond when we do the faux matte. Um, portion of the class, I use this acrylic paper, which has got a, like a linen texture so that it makes a nice, a nice edge on your painting when you tape it off. Let's see, various sketchbooks. I don't know this, I don't know this brand. Huh. We're just having a field trip here, guys, at the my my happy place these are fun too i don't know if you've ever seen these but <clears throat> i have a few of these the like watercolor cards and watercolor paper 
by Strathmore. They're really nice when you, if you, you know, want to paint your friends their own cards. I'm going to do a class on this because um, you can just do like a single flower and make these really lovely little cards. I send them to family and friends and they're great to do at night in front of the TV or whatever. Um, that looks like a nice sketchbook by Hannah Mule. Pretty. And I do like the, um, this is the Strathmore watercolor. It's like a book. I like this one. I'll show it to you. Oof. It's a bit larger. It's um, 7.75 inches by 9.75. So larger than the moleskin and bound like a book with really nice watercolor paper inside. So I have a couple of those over the years that I've filled in. Well, not completely. I did finally finish a sketchbook, but I tend to start more and <laughs> the finishing part is a little, I'm a little, we a little behind on the finishing part. I like starting things. Um, mixed media paper I like as long as, yeah, 138 pound. I just think you're going to be annoyed if you're using paper thinner than 140 pounds. And then, um, what else can I show you? Let's see. Yeah, tell me if you want or want me to show you anything in particular. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep wandering around. Oh, you're welcome, Mary. Yeah, I, like I said, the last thing I want you to do is feel badly, like, uh, but I just figure it gives you ideas and, you know, you see what's out there. Um, okay, here are the pastels. All right, now these are ink tense blocks. So I have not used these. I don't have any of them, but it says permanent once dry. Doesn't wash out like watercolor. Layer up intense vibrant colors. So that might be something to try. Oh, look at that color. That's pretty. Um, I need that. Yes, I sure do. Payne's gray might be one of my favorite colors. It, it's, it's my favorite dark. Yeah, I, I'm totally obsessed with it. I think I might do some paintings of just different, you know, values of Payne's gray. Okay, these are the Neo Pastels. I use that Mungio brand of the oil pastels that I have a link to on my website. I just really like them for the money. Um, uh, I did get a couple of these last time, the Neo Pastels. It's just pastels are can be really pricey, like, yeah, like these. I mean, I know saint Elier is a great brand, but they're $4.25 a piece. Yikes. I think I got that whole Mungio set with 48 colors for like $44 or something like that. And it's it's excellent. I do have a I do have some of these um, soft pastels in Saint Elie. I did buy treat myself to a set. They're the ones that are real powdery, like just touching it. In fact, you're not allowed to test these because they're so fragile. Um, now these are the Blick artist pastels. Okay, those are soft. They're not oil pastels. Oh, look at this section, the Posca marker section. Well, they're down here. It's okay. I'm just doing a Facebook Live on my art group so everybody can see all the goodies here. Um, actually, I think I'm getting low on... Oh, you don't have the medium ivory, do you? Looks like I'll get it online. Get the white. I love that ivory. All right. Look at all these sketchbooks. Blick Studio. What is this one? There's so many. This is why I, I, I repeat after me, or just somebody send me a message. Suzanne, do not buy another sketchbook. You haven't even opened the one you bought here last time. Somebody stop me. Oh, pastel paper. 
I have never bought a pad of this, but I, <clears throat> it's like sandpaper. But uh, yeah, a piece came when I ordered my, when my pastels came, a piece of it came to try. It's kind of wild. I'm sure you've seen the artists who are doing entire compositions in pastel. All right, guys, well, I guess I better um, figure out what I am getting and and then say goodbye. I'm gonna leave you with those Holbein gouache. That's definitely the most delicious thing here. That's the aqua gouache up there, and then the Holbein regular gouache below. Thanks for coming to the art store with me. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Hello, lovelies. I thought I would show you what I got at the art store and some art supplies that just arrived from Jerry's, Jerry's Artorama, and, I, and my visit to the Blick art store in Tampa. But just so you know, one of those torrential <laughs> rainstorms just started, so hopefully you can't hear it, but we will go ahead. Um, all right, so I picked up a few brushes at Blick, and they're the, my, my two favorite shapes, which is the bright shape, which is this rectangle shape, and then another round. I just, I hadn't tried, I don't think I've tried this brand, the Blick Scholastic. And then this was um, Ulrecht. Let me put my glasses on. Ultrecht. Anyway, I can't. I don't know. Anyway, it's U T R E C H T. But it just had a nice feel. It's firm but also soft. A lot of times they're kind of one or the other. So, like, if I take my Linzer Newton, and this is a watercolor brush, it's very soft, which is what you want in watercolor. And then acrylic brushes tend to be more stiff, like this. You know, if you can even hear the fibers. So this just felt like uh, something in between, which I thought would be fun to play with. And um, this is also very soft. So we'll see. Just something to try. I also picked up um, more of these artisan water mixable oils, and I'll do a separate video on these because I've been doing some painting with them, and I had not tried the oil painting paper with a linen finish, so I picked that up as well. This is a very heavy 215-pound paper, but it... So, and it almost looks like a, it really does look like linen, like linen fabric. Um, I have been painting with the oils on paper with, but you just have to gesso the paper first. So um, I'll show you. The downside to the oil is how long it takes to dry. So this is a painting I'm working on. And you know, this is still tacky from yesterday. It takes a few days to dry even to the touch. And then the other downside is, you know, to sell these, they have to cure for a good two months anyway. And, but I just, the texture, the, the color, I don't know, it just, it's very yummy. So I'm kind of torn on that. Um, I did try a retarder, or a, um, not a retarder, the opposite, a medium that makes it dry faster, but it also thins it out like most mediums, so we'll see. Like I said, I'll do a separate video on, on the oils and maybe do some oil painting and show you the luscious texture. Let's see what else can I get? 
Oh, I picked up this Payne's Gray ink because I was almost out of my indigo ink, which I love. And I thought, well, instead of the indigo, let's try the Payne's Gray color and see what that's like. Let's see, I don't think I need anything that dark on any of these that I'm working on, so I'm not gonna get that out just yet. And then I got a shipment in from Jerry's. So let's take a look at that. Let me get these. These are paintings that I've just wanted to do some more details on, kind of finish them up. But let's see what I got at Jerry's. I ordered a good week ago and I, I'm not sure what's in here. Okay, I guess I picked out a lot. <laughs> Don't need more colors, but I wanted to try. Um, the reason I like these Turner tubes is they're great for travel. They're just the perfect size. I can take, you know, eight of them or so in a bag and they just travel a lot more easily than, you know, say the Liquitex Afro wash, which looks like this, except it has a black top. Now these don't travel real well. It's just more than you need to travel. Um, and of course, regular gouache comes in small tubes too. So I was just messing around with some new colors pastel lilac. Um, I always need yellow, a primary. Luminescent red that's basically fluorescent. Let's see what else I got. I haven't even looked at these since they came because I wanted to look at them with you. Again, always need yellow or yellow. This is the lemon yellow. So basically a cool yellow and a warm yellow. And then I picked up some of these pastels. I hadn't gotten their they have a, such a huge color range. It's, I think, over 200 colors. Um, so I wanted to try these pastels. Let's see. I think I kind of went crazy on the Turners. I haven't bought them in a while. Ivory. I hadn't tried their ivory. Here's another pastel marine and another yellow deep. And... Um, I think I got some larger tubes. I'm always needing white. So, oops. Okay, this looks like a shoot. I didn't mean to do that. I must have selected two on here, and now I've got two <laughs> cadmium yellow. Oh my goodness. I was in a yellow. Look at this. I bought, uh, maybe I needed some sunshine that day. Holy cow. Well, I'll use it, but I really didn't need to buy two of these big ones. Maybe I'll do a giveaway with you guys. That's a good idea. And then uh, I've been reading about these, and I'll do a separate video on them, you know, actually getting them out and painting with them, but the Golden Open, and they're slow drying acrylic paints. So I have the regular Golden, Tubes. Let me grab a couple. Where are you? Oh, I have them over here. I'll show you what they look like. They are just... In fact, this color is amazing. Teal. Um, so they just look like this. And But the opens are... I think they're, they're trying to, you know, develop a paint that acts more like oil in the sense that it doesn't drag so quickly and you have more time to play with it. So I just wanted to try it. So I got this set, the Color Mixing Modern Theory. They sell a set called Landscape Colors and I read some reviews and people said they, they don't know why they put those colors. They didn't like the, the landscape set. So I went with this one. So let's see what came in the set. And again, this uh, this whole order was from Jerry's Artorama. Jerry's Artorama and, and Blick Art are where I order, and Amazon, um, pretty much all my supplies. There are other places, of course, and stores, but, okay, where are my scissors? Well, I guess I can get this off. Looks like this set came with 
some thinner, which they did say you have to use, uh, well, probably don't have to, but that you should use any medium, um, make sure they're the open. And it doesn't, they, you can use like a regular, let's say, gel medium, like for example this that doesn't say open, but it's going to be faster drying. It's going to make these faster drying. So you can kind of control some of that. All right, so big tube of white. I always appreciate when they do that because if you paint, you know you use more white than anything. And it never makes sense when they give you a set and the white is the same size as the others. So looks like all the essentials here in terms of, yeah, the, the well, except for kind of a cyan color, which uh, you can, I can make. I can make that with either this phthalo blue, green shade, phthalo, gr phthalo green, blue shade, and then the lemon yellow. Somewhere in there I can get a turquoise. Then we've got, it looks like a cad yellow medium, but it's not CAD. They call it Benzimidolozone. I think it's a healthier type of yellow. Clinacridone magenta. Napsol red light. And the Deox... Dioxazine purple, which I buy every now and then. It's a, it makes a great dark. If you take this and a little bit of warm yellow, you get just this plum, beautiful plum color. So, yeah, that's the open. I, I, re I remember when I ordered them, I researched how long they will stay dry. Um, it says here they've been able to use the same colors for weeks. Feels like no other paint. Um, I did re read some reviews that um, I don't know, people seem to either love them or hate them. So I'll be kind of curious what I think. Uh, it does say, you know, thicker, don't, if you, if you paint thicker applications over one sixteenth of an inch, they'll dry extremely slowly. That makes sense. But I don't know if we're talking about days or weeks. The mediums and thinner help maximize the working time. That makes sense. Um, and then this chart, I like with the colors. And let's see what is, looks like they're doing some color mixing on this chart. Showing you maybe a tint. What happens when you add white to the color, looks like. Oh yeah, here's the explanation. Yeah, tinted with titanium white. And then the color number that it is. There's the Payne's Gray. Did I? Oh yeah, I, did. I just got the introductory set, so I don't have a Payne's Gray. So I'll play with these and stay tuned. I'll be back with a video on how, what I think of them. And um, thanks for coming with me to the art store. And that was really fun. And I'll, I'll share the next art store, which I think is probably going to be either the Jerry's Artorama in Austin or the Blick store in Dallas in October. I hope to be there and go share those. All right, happy creating.